Hey there, it's Ryan Skaggs, and this is the Mortgage Minute. Thank you so much for tuning in. This channel is dedicated to everything real estate, mortgage, and interest rates. So let's dive into those interest rates. It is late July, almost the last week of July here, 2021. We've seen rates move down yet again, three, four straight weeks. We've seen rates move down after about seven, eight weeks of rates moving up. So we are at 278 on the average 30 year fixed, according to Freddie Mac. That is down 10 basis points or from 288 down to 278 uh, week over week. The link below will actually get you right to the Freddie Mac survey. They do a great chart and a weekly survey on where interest rates are at. We're essentially at that same point from February um, than we are today, basically. So our absolute 50 year low, uh, the dip happened at the end of December into January. So we are very, very near our absolute low. So while you're down there checking out that chart, hit that like button, hit that subscribe, be a supporter of the channel. I would be forever grateful. Now let's talk about today, kind of the meat and potatoes of, of this video is we're gonna talk about the three questions every buyer should ask their lender, right? So every buyer typically thinks, hey, well, I just ask, what is your rate? And that's the end of it, right? Well, here's the three questions every single buyer should be asking. Number one, now this is for a purchase scenario. So imagining you're trying to make a purchase is, how are you gonna help me get my offer accepted? Lender, right? So question one, how are you going to help me get my offer accepted? Right now is a crazy hot seller's market and virtually all across the United States. So how are you going to help me? Even in a balanced market, lender, how are you going to help me do that? So I have five different steps that I do, but ask your lender that question. Be able to break down of, oh, I'm going to provide you a pre-approval letter. Ah, wrong answer, right? Anyone would be able to do that. If you apply and go through the process, uh, potentially provide some documentation, anyone's going to be able to do that, right? So you have to apply to be able to see if your credit qualified to see if you can get pre-approved. But with that said, anyone would be able to, or any lender would be able to provide you a pre-approval letter. That's kind of par for the course. If that's all that they're doing, or they don't really have an answer, or they don't have a five-step program, not saying you need five or 10 or three or whatever else, but you know, have them walk you through exactly what that means. So um, second of which is how long are your typical closings? If you took a purchase right now, how fast could I move with confidence that you could close and not move the close date? See what their answer is. Every market's going to be different. I know my exact average of application to clear to close every single day. I look at this report every single day. What's the average application to initial underwrite? What's the average from application to clear to close? Those loan officers out there or lenders out there that might not know their numbers, right? Of like, typically it's between 20 and 25 days. Okay, that's fine. Like, oh, well, we can we can close quick. I do not like that answer. And eh, you know, X again, right? So, you know, the answers you want to get is, Hey, right now I'm averaging between 25 and 26 days from application to clear to close on purchase or refi. Purchases are actually a little faster for me right now, averaging around 23 days. So if I gave you the answer, you have some clarity. When you write a 30-day contract, that's well below my average. I don't even have to rush anything to potentially provide you the right timing, right? A lot of banks, especially in this busy market, in this low interest rate market, a lot of big banks are very, very slow to add additional staff. Right. So basically their turn times go exceptionally higher, 45 or 60 days to get a transaction done. So that is question number two. And number three, who will I deal with once we actually get a contract or we start moving forward with the loan? A lot of loan officers will pass it over to a processor or a team and then not communicate. And now you feel like you've been passed from person to person to person. Now, you don't know that up front because you've only talked to one person or maybe two people or something like that. Right. Um, but definitely ask. Who are the interested parties? Who is going to be reaching out to me throughout this transaction? Like how many different people and what do they do, right? Have that loan officer, have that lender run through who their team is, what they do. Like for me, I tell every single person, this is a big deal. It's myself and my team captain. That's it. I have assistants. My team captain has assistants that do work in the background. There's only two people they're going to communicate during this transaction. We're going to communicate on a weekly basis. We're going to give you an update and we're going to provide updates on every single milestone. So that's my commitment to you, borrower, right? So let the ask the lender, see how many different people. Well, we've got somebody that does this and then uh, we'll have two or three different processors depending upon turn like 
all of a sudden know that you're probably going to be handed off. You have to be prepared that you're going to be handed to a bunch of different people that you've never met before. And that is absolutely something that you need to be cognizant of, right? So if you've enjoyed talking with a loan officer thus far, you may not have that loan officer really engaged later on, depending upon, you know, how they do their business. So ask the question, you know, engage them, give them an expectation is I want you to be reaching out to me, right? I'd like to work with you, but I want to make sure we're on the same page of what sort of communication I need as a client. It, right. So those are those three questions to summarize. How are you going to help me get my offer accepted? What is the timing? And who do you deal with during the loan process? If you just ask what's your 30 year fixed on rate, they could throw you any number whatsoever. Right. Rates move up. Rates move down. That question is flawed because every lender is going to price aggressively or conservatively every day. And as those rates move, that rate got better or worse, depending upon the market. So it's not going to help you necessarily find that best solution for you. So this is Ryan Skaggs in the Mortgage Minute. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see each other again very, very soon.